much for also serving that big God with us here on the show. Now, uh, last week, like we said earlier on, that we'll be discussing about children and how to raise children in the right way. And we all must agree that children are raised by two parties, the parents and the schools. Interestingly, schools spend more time with our children than we do. Once a child clocks three years, the rest is cool until they're done with university. And the other interesting bit about university, once they're done with university, the next thing these kids are independent. They don't want to go back to their parents or they're getting married. Well, so the discussion today is how do we raise our children the right way? And that is the godly way. Also morally, how do we help our children become better in society? And also how do we help our children become that generation that will save the next generation? Welcome to the show again and in studio with me, I am with an amazing couple that founded a Christian school and they're working together and they're doing great things in the school. Personally, I have been able to uh, have a few conversations with some of the students in the school and the feedback is amazing. But before I talk a lot about the school and what they do, how about we give them a chance to talk about themselves. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I will start with the gentleman, or should we start with the lady? Ladies first. Wow, okay. Can we know you and uh, how are you related? Well, <laughs> thank you so much. Yes. And uh, good to uh, thank you for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. Our dear viewers, uh, thank you for listening in. My name is Dorothy Mwesigwa. I'm married to Caleb Mwesigwa. And uh, together, we steward the students, mm. the learners at Sasha International Christian School. Okay. Yes. I am Caleb Mwesigwa, mm. and um, I serve at Sasha International Christian School as a principal. Mm. And um, rightly, as you've said, we've seen um, students, learners, come in and we've seen by the grace of God, learners being transformed into what uh, they really want to be. Um, basically, learners discovering their purpose and potential in God. Amen. Yes. Can you just, uh, just a little bit personal, let's just get to know you first. Mm. How long have you been together? How long have you been married? How many children have you got together? Thank you so much. Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, start with uh, how long we've been married. Okay. Um, we are in our 16th year of marriage. Wow, nice. We have uh, three children. Okay. We have a boy who is um, 14 years. That's Joshua Asobola. We have a girl, Esther Sanide, and a boy, Jeremiah Sinziwe. Okay. Yes. Wow, that's very interesting, and these are our guests for the show today. And she if you're out there, she has mm. cut our years it should be seventeen. Oh, <laughs> she didn't include the, she didn't include the, the one dating, that's yeah. coming. Yes. Oh, the one that's coming. Okay, how, how, how many years before the marriage? <laughs> yes. Uh, how many years before the marriage? Mm. Or how many months before the marriage? Oh, <laughs> you even know the okay, months. So, <laughs> okay, so how many months? So you are the type of couple that didn't mm. want to waste time. Because when you talk about months, then mm. you dated for a few months and boom. Yeah. Hey, we, we actually didn't date. Oh. I'm sorry, we don't have a story about dating. Mm. All we, uh, we just uh, met ourselves. Uh, we've been, we've been um, youths while in Watoto Church, then KPC, and uh, we, fo he, we found each other um, in a fellowship. We used to have a, what is called a Young Workers Fellowship, mm. and we used to get to know each other in that aspect. And uh, did we date? That short period between uh, <laughs> proposing <laughs> and uh, introduction <laughs> and wedding. Hmm. We had, we had, um, I, I did propose, I think, in January. <laughs> uh, we introduced in, um, yeah. in uh, July, and, oh. the, and the wedding was in August. No time to waste. 
<laughs> so basically, when you proposed in January, you didn't have enough time to do the coffees and the, you know, the dinners because you're preparing for your functions. Can I, we, we can would, I imagine so? We <laughs> would have sugar canes. I'll, I'll hey. We would eat, we will, uh, we will date over sugar canes and uh, yeah, okay. planning for our marriage, counseling. That's, that was the dating, I'll, really. I'll tell you, I think <laughs> part of the reasons for that yeah. is that um, we had be born, we had both been well nurtured in church. Mm. We had gone through, we had grown through the structures at church. Mm. Um, there was a, a we had accountability yeah. right from the elders at church. They knew who we were, and um, once we went to the elders, we want to get married. Uh, they were just like, "We've given you everything. Let's organize." <laughs> Interestingly, one of uh, our spiritual parents mm -hmm. that had told earlier on that should I ever marry, you'll be my best man. And when I did propose to her, she told me, I'm going to take you to my father. If he <laughs> says yes, we are good to go. <laughs> Interestingly, she took me to someone who was supposed to be my best man. Oh. So she was asking him if you say yes, and then uh, everything just fell in place. Oh, and, uh, that was easy. And then he said... That was very easy. <laughs> no questions? That's because there was accountability. We were yes. fully accountable. Mm. So he knew her. He knew me. Yeah, that is a, a gentleman we are not ashamed to talk about. is uh, mm. Elder Henry Semwanga. Mm. He's a deacon at Watoto Church, so we were fully accountable mm. to him, but also to the entire church structure. Okay. So they knew who they were joining together. And um, we bless the Lord that uh, for this time, mm. since our wedding, uh, we've not uh, disappointed ourselves, we've not disappointed God, but also the people who had faith in us that uh, is a right to get married. Wow. Yeah. You guys make marriage look so beautiful. <laughs> and indeed it's beautiful. And indeed it's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you so much. So <laughs> on the show today, we have an amazing couple. That's Mr. and Mrs. Moisigua, who are the founders of Shaka? Sasha, Sasha. Sasha. National Christian School. It's Sasha. We can always say Shaka. Hebrew. <laughs> Sasha is a Hebrew Sasha. word. Oh, okay. Sasha yes. International School. Can you just uh, briefly tell us what exactly does uh, Sasha do and what curriculum are you very intentional with at the school? Sasha is an international Christian school uh, using the ACE curriculum, mm -hmm. Accelerated Christian Education mm -hmm. curriculum. And um, we aim, our aim is to have this child reach their God-given potential. Mm -hmm. uh, we all have different potentials, we all have different giftings, and we come from the background that God never created any junk. Mm -hmm. Every person created by the Lord and mm -hmm. is on earth has a purpose. There is a purpose for which God put this child on earth. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is our main goal, to nurture this child towards reaching their God-given Potential. potential. So before we really dive into our conversation, can you just tell us where did you get the motivation and the vision to start the school and the whole idea of, you know, being in the education? Okay, so, um, one of the things uh, I would like to mention is that uh, my husband is a teacher. Okay. And, uh, he's by profession? By yeah, profession. By training, yes. He's been in teaching for over 20 years. And uh, we actually, in school, we have uh, children, uh, for the, uh, children whose parents were taught by him. Former students. Yes. And we have some trainers or teachers at school hmm. that were my former students as well. Oh, yes. interesting. So hmm. having been in that curriculum, our Ugandan curriculum, it's very beautiful. It's a very good curriculum. He walked that journey. And when God gave us children, he was disturbed. Maybe he can explain that bit mm -hmm. okay. about... Mm -hmm. uh, um, 
without taking anything from the Ugandan curriculum, because um, that's where most of us uh, came from. We, we went through the curriculum. I was, um, I was serving, um, that is 2009, I was serving as a deputy teacher at um, Makere High School in Ugade, the boarding campus. And um, yeah, I was looking at what are we having for the future, was the time to coming towards the end time. And um, the teachers had to account to the hierarchy, what are you doing with the children and so on. And um, so at one time, one of the teachers tell me, we are looking at what is going to come in your name only, all right? Which is a good thing because you are looking at children passing. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, that's the assessment that the country is giving. Mm -hmm. And um, yes, so I looked at um, my colleagues, explaining to the children, making sure they understand and they pass. And they want, so we wanted to have a radio candidate. Would you, what we mean by radio candidate, someone who performs well and uh, they are read on the news, they are on TV, they are on radio, which is a good thing. Um, so I, I kind of got disturbed mm -hmm. because um, my thinking was education should offer us a little so much more, not just to beat the exam and that is it. Mm -hmm. And I realized that some of our students would lose the motivation to learn when the motivation to pass an exam is put away. Okay, so because of that, one, I decided to have uh, an education system, a curriculum that is going to spur learners into making learning a lifelong experience. Mm. And then um, the other thing, of course, uh, uh, Makere High School that is a Christian school, okay? And um, though when you look at the ACE curriculum, it takes the Christian aspect a much higher. So as a Christian, I uh, we were looking at what more can we offer? What more can we offer to the learner in terms of character, in terms of academic excellence, in terms of mastery. And that's when um, we go to the ACE mm -hmm. curriculum and uh, we felt that uh, it was ticking every box. Yes, and the other thing uh, in um, his uh, journey for education, we encountered two students then. One was very, very, very gifted in uh, soccer. Very gifted in soccer. And uh, he had gone through the system, but he wasn't really given time with intentionality to focus on what he was very gifted in, uh, soccer. He's actually currently, uh, we are okay to mention the name Arthur. He yes. used to be... Um, he used to play for police. He used to be a coach and technical director at Edigas. He should be now one of... Um, uh, the last time I checked, he was with URA FC, mm. and he was one of uh, the coaches. And he retired from playing, retired from the field earlier because um, because of uh, because he got an injury. However, that encouragement, mm. we made sure that uh, we encourage him to play soccer because that was his passion. All right. Uh, that was his passion. That was the purpose, the potential that God had placed on his life. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, I, I was trying to make sure that he can benefit from that passion. Um, the purpose of education uh, is to be that um, you, you are not pushing this child only to pass the exam, only to uh, to become this, what we used to call the big three. If you don't become a lawyer, a doctor, or an engineer, we wanted to take away that illusion that if you are not those three, then you're a failure in life. Mm -hmm. Because 
it is not true. So we allowed him, and he played soccer. And uh, I met I met some of uh, people that were making uh, his school fees depots at school. Some of them I was teaching with them in the school, and they tell me, "Yeah, the boy is uh, eating from soccer." Yes. I mean, soccer is putting food on his plate. Yet the system yeah. would actually punish him sometimes for yes. going out of that way. So, so in other words, it's mm. important to identify a child's character. Mm -hmm. Yes, academics is there, mm -hmm. but there is also the importance of identifying the talents and also pushing the talents. So basically, the two have to work hand in hand. Naturally. Naturally, yes. The talent. Yes, okay. and, and actually with the intentionality because mm -hmm. um, at um, Sasha and of course other schools I'm sure, mm -hmm. we currently have um, some students who are going into soccer, some are going into basketball, others are going into the, th the three, the lawyer and all that. But um, besides just the academics, mm -hmm. there is um, some man hours that they use mm -hmm. to go and grow themselves in that area. Okay. Because uh, learning is beyond really just uh, the papers. Mm. Yes. Okay, so coming back to our topic today, um, as heads of a school, tell us what are some of those challenges you think students are facing from their homes and as well as you as a school how do you help the students overcome these challenges and what challenges are you also facing in mm -hmm. helping these children yes. yes or in receiving children from different homes different cultures how, can you just give us a picture of what it is like um of course um, the biggest challenge that the children face currently mm. is uh, from a parent's perspective because i'm also a parent uh, is being absent. Parents, we are totally absent. And as I talk, I also talk to myself. Mm. Mo many other times, uh, we take our children to schools and literally never relate with those children. That's one of the child. They have issues that mm. not only a parent can really um, help but we are really upset. And I don't blame parents mm. because we really need to look for fees and everything. But one of the challenges that most of our children face, mm. we are really absent parents. We are really chasing so much. And most of the time, they never, they get advice from the wrong people. Yeah, that's one of the biggest challenges that our children face that uh, we really need to look at and address. Yeah. So how yes. do we address this challenge? How do we, as parents, mm. because you yes. speak from a parental point of view, maybe mm. before we come to that, now mm. let's talk about the school. Mm. Yeah. How have you been able to help that student and the parent to understand that, look, I am absent, but this is the reason? Or how do you help the parent say, okay, I need to be present. How do I balance my time for work, my time for this? How do you help a student understand the parent that, you know, it's, it's a lot going on. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things that um, mm -hmm. the SCE curriculum requires, I'm talking from a parent's perspective, yes. is um, a parent's involvement in the learning of the children. It's not easy, but the system forces us as parents to be available. And how? One of the things that uh, children uh, in SCE have to adhere to, as parents we have to adhere to mm -hmm. is to uh, find out what has hap been happening in the week mm -hmm. if a child brought homework it's not just doing it and everything mm -hmm. uh, you really need to be involved uh, weekends children take projects and these projects are not only in the academia but also in other aspects where parents also need to be involved mm -hmm. and at our school you actually have to send a video showing that you're doing that. But also um, the other thing that we do at school is we have time, SCE system, we have time to conference with a the parent. There is that that is scheduled, but there are those that uh, where a parent is really called just to deliberate 
not only on academics, but other issues that a child is going through. So much as we are absent, but we, there is a way uh, the system embeds in that. And we also encourage our children to be very open to their parents. Because we always tell them that we shall really inform mommy and daddy. We are solely accountable to your parents. Whatever goes on around at, at school, the parents ought to be knowing. There are times when, the, especially the teenagers, will tell you, please, let this be end between me and you. But there is a way we tactfully make sure the parents get to know, without, of course, uh, uh, breaking the relationship with the children because they entrust us and uh, there are things that they open up to the school mm. system. Actually, yeah. you just mentioned something very key. Mm. Um, it's very few schools where I have had students being free mm. with their school teachers or school heads because you know when you come home there is that fear created between a child and a parent the and then there is going to school and there is that fear between a parent I mean between a teacher and a child like you mm -hmm. said earlier on where it's more of you have to pass you have to pass mm -hmm. so the teacher is paying more attention to marks to results as opposed to relationship to character how mm. how can how can other uh, uh, teachers or people in the education system pick a leave what can be done differently mm. yes. one of the things uh, before Caleb comes in um, a performance of a, a child mm. show me good performance and I'll show you good character those things work hand in hand and as a school um, we need to focus more on character. Mm -hmm. I'm sure what keeps all of us wherever we are is really character. Mm -hmm. You may not know how, how well I passed, but what you're interested in is those uh, soft skills, character, that is very important. Mm -hmm. So we really um, need to uh, focus more on character. Mm -hmm. And when we say good uh, character, it should be godly character. So our system in SEE uh, drives and rewards that, such that even the one where well, as academics is very, very important, mm. but the reward system really focuses on, on a character. Before we look at the academics, when we promote the character. And when the reward system is there, the children even inevitable, the students inevitable will also want to drive into that direction. And when character is worked on, these other things shall be well with the learners. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Caleb, you had something to yes, share with I, us I, well. I wanted to read a scripture mm -hmm. from the Bible. Okay. That is Genesis, uh, from the book of Genesis, uh, chapter 18. I'll start from verse 17. And the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham that thing which I do, seeing that Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. For I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken. Um, from this scripture, we learn we learned that um, the Lord was saying, I will not hide anything from Abraham. And um, the condition, the reason as to why he was not to hide anything, verse 19 says, because Abraham was to command, command his children and his household after him to do justice and all those good things. All right? So, um, the command we have from the Lord mm. as parents, as a father, uh, when, when we're in school, uh, we, o we often tell us, our students and even the parents that this is not just a school. It is an extension of home mm. because the Lord placed the primary responsibility of teaching a child on the parent. Mm. Schools we come in because 
of um, of the of um, of the society needs that the parent has to go work, yeah. you have to do this and that, and therefore schools we come in. Now when we come in to take the position of the parent, actually at school I tell my students, when you come to school, you've come to meet another father. So I am daddy in school and my wife is mommy in the school. So our role is to create a homely environment in the school. Mm -hmm. That's why our learners get free with us. So I actually have uh, one of the parents uh, who enrolled her children in the school and after some time she was like, I've observed in his former school he would be scared just being near his teacher. And then they come to, to Sasha and children are free to come into the principal's office anytime. I want this, I want that, and mm. with that kind of freedom, why? We have to create a homely mm. environment, an environment where these learners are able to thrive. Mm. Now, going back to the scripture, Abraham was to command his household to, in the precepts of the Lord, so that they will teach them justice, uh, good justice and judgment and when you do that according to the Bible then God was going to do to Abraham that which he had promised Abraham. Why? Because the promises God gives us are not for us alone. Mm -hmm. They are for us and our seed after us. In other words, our children said it's a, a generational blessing. Alright? Therefore, as a school, because we are the extension of home, we ought to command our children in the ways of the Lord, to keep the ways of the Lord. So our primary mandate mm -hmm. as a school is that this child must know God, mm -hmm. right? Must know God and the principles of God. And when they know God and his principles, mm -hmm. then character will be formed in them. They will not do, they will not desire to do something that is going to be against the Lord. Mm -hmm. So we teach the precepts of the Lord, the character traits after Jesus Christ, how he, how he lived on earth. All right? Those character traits, that's what uh, uh, Joseph called the soft skills. Because at the end of the day, when you want to relate with a person, for example, if you are someone sent you an application, they want a job or they want a placement, yes, you look at their papers and say, well, yes, they, they passed well. <laughs> but now, let's look at the person. Why? You mm. want to see if these characters are really formed. And it's important that as, as teachers will be intentional on this because um, most people stumble on them in life all right and they get it right mm -hmm. but that is a very small percentage now when as schools when we get intentional mm -hmm. on teaching uh, our learners these soft skills the character traits modeled after christ then the world will be a better place Okay, so uh, I just want to ask um, another question is, at what age can a child's talent um, be uh, supported? And also, I want to ask, I'm going to ask two, two, two questions at a go <laughs> due to time. Mm -hmm. Do you at any one time ever feel um, burdened to play the role of a parent in these children's lives? Do you feel parents are putting that burden on you. Do you ever feel that at any one point as heads of the school? Hmm. Mm. Yes. Many times. Many times. Uh, why? Mm. Uh, we are different levels of parenting. Mm. That's one of um, it's uh, a fact that um, circumstances, not because uh, we are not um, intentional as parents, but there are circumstances that are inevitable mm. for us to leave the role of a parent. There are those parents that are genuinely 
not uh, able to parent. Give you a, a examples of parents in the diaspora. We have parents who's, who don't want their children to study from the diaspora because of the reason you, uh, you may be not. Working when there, when they are working there. there, so we have um, such parents, and uh, inevitably you become the parent. Then there are parents that uh, feel that it is the, the school of the, res the responsibility of the school to do all the work. All I need to do is to pay fees on time, and the rest is, the rest is that school. is it. <laughs> so I drop and take, and then the children literally feel that they need, they have that um, space, they have that gap. Mm. They, uh, they desire to have uh, a father, they desire to have a mother figure mm. who speaks to them. So quite often, mm. and there are those parents who are available, mm. and uh, children just feel, uh, the other children just feel, we also need somebody who is like this. Much as we have our parents, but uh, what a parent should do for us is missing. So many, many times, mm. children come to you and they say, um, may I talk to you? I have these issues. And you encourage the child that, um, befriend mommy. And sometimes they say, mommy, mommy is not approachable. She comes back with all the stress and maybe just shouts all this and the other. And uh, I literally also empathize with them because sometimes I would also do that. Come back home, maybe work was not good and all that, and then you download mm -hmm. with the, on the, the children. Ones, yes. <laughs> and then there are those other that mm -hmm. say, I tell you, my parents are really tough. It's either grades, you have to move. We were, we were talking to a, a, a child recently and she was telling us, do you know how I'm stressed? My parent wants to leave this grade as soon as yesterday. Yet the child was sick. She spent about a month and she was away. But the pressure the parent is exerting on her. She said, I'm actually stressed. So what do you do with such a child? You need to really um, talk to her, but also connect with the parent and make the parent really understand. So we have many times, many times, um, parents need to be reminded that the overall responsibility of parenting and uh, educating these children is us. It's the mandate from God. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay, and uh, just before we go in for a break, I just, uh, just want to ask you one more question before we head for a break. Um, as we release as you release students into holidays, this is a very long holiday of the mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is your greatest fear, briefly? Um, our greatest fear, as we release the children, is um, the use of uh, social media, mm -hmm. all right? The use of social media, because um, we have a saying at school, if you are not smart, <laughs> You're not ready for a smartphone. Mm -hmm. Oh, mm. okay. Right. Q, um, are you hearing that? Mm. Yes, we usually <laughs> tell our teenagers, <laughs> <laughs> if you're well, not smart, you're not ready to handle You are one. not ready to handle because one. Because as, as parents, as people in the workspace, we use these smartphones for smart ideas, doing business smart and so on. And then these children are using these phones not for smart things. Um, for us at school, our policy is uh, if you did something wrong at home and it is discovered at home, at school, you'll be reprimanded at school. Why? Because if you sow a wrong seed at home, it is going to germinate at school. At school. Mm. However, our reprimands are uh, in such a way that we build the child, mm. not break the child. child. Yes. Discipline is for, for not, not to. to. Not for not to. rebuilding, yes. not to mm. inflict pain. So okay. in whatever we do, we ensure that we are, build, we are disciplining this child mm. to breed or to bring up correction and encourage love not rejection 
mm. and rebellion. Mm. You see, if you, if you discipline to break, you'll cause rebellion and rejection. So this child will, will, will reject you who offers the discipline. Why? You didn't. Maybe you weren't professional enough, or you. Sometimes we, we take we take time even to pray about how we're going to approach this child because whatever life. anything is done, mm -hmm. they are still precious before the Lord's sight. Yes, and they are still His creation, mm -hmm. and therefore our mandate as educators is to make sure we repair this child. And because we are accountable to God, that we present them before the Lord, okay, without, uh, without a wrinkle or a scar, mm. all right, without mm. spot or wrinkle. So yes. the other fear is, um, we must say that um, God has enabled us um, steward the, the students in the right way. Mm. But uh, in this journey, as we steward, the learners at school at a different wavelength. Our fear is those that are not discipled. Because when they go to this ro very long holiday and they are not fully engaged and you only leave them with the phones, they'll get lost. So our fear is the idle time at home. Because when they're idle, the smartphone will find a, a, I don't want to say, a mind that is not smart. Mm. Uh, <laughs> so when they find that mind that is not smart, even us as adults, we struggle with what pops into our phones. True. How much more would, would the children struggle? So our worry, our worry is the children who are not yet grounded. Because when they land on anything, they'll become anything. The other fear that we have during holidays are the absent parents. Because uh, if they're absent, I tell you, children will link up with anything. So those are some of our fears. And we are also certain, not certain about uh, what programs they will have at home. So those are some of the things. And we keep on talking. Mm -hmm. And we keep on sharing. And there are those who are doing well in holidays, so they keep on sharing with what and they do. And maybe over holidays, I would recommend parents over there who are watching us, this is one of those good shows that yeah. children should, should watch. Sit. Yes. sit and watch yeah. over holidays, because yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. it is one of those shows that is impacting character, yeah. values, okay. and um, at something valuable yeah. to the child, because at the end of the day, when you send your child to school, mm. there is what you want this child to come out with. Mm. There are certain things parents look for in schools, mm. but that's not what they pay for, and the child will never go away with it. Okay. For example, if you went to school and say, ah, these structures are not really nice, mm you're going to leave that very nice storage building in the school. Your child will never go with it. And that's what, not what you're paying for. But whatever you're paying for is the value. Mm -hmm. That fence that is put around the heart of the child. For the child to know that uh, this is what, even if I'm in holiday, no mm -hmm. one is watching, but the character. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm, I'm supposed to do. They are responsible enough to know their boundaries. Mm. And that is what uh, a, a, a parent should pay for. Mm. Not, um, uh, it's good to have nice buildings, mm. but it's not to be the primary reason okay. for enrolling. Okay, uh, yes. uh, I had uh, previously said one more question before the break, but <laughs> the conversation <laughs> is getting more and more interesting. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask uh, again before we get into the break. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes, music is amazing, but words of wisdom are amazing too. What are you doing to keep children engaged and find passion in what they are good at? For character, what do you have to say about children's characters being copied from what they see at home and what is their advice to their parents?
parents? Okay. Um, I'll start with character. Mm. The best teacher of character is God. The best advice I can give to the parents, mm. please pray for your children. Because he's the creator. He has the full manual of your child. You go to the producer, to the producer of that um, child. Because mm. like we use the gadgets, there is a manual in there instructs you. So God has the money for our children. So parents, let's pray for our children. Before anything, pray for them. And the second thing, teach them to pray. Teach them to pray for themselves. Teach them the word of God. Because the word of God tells us, train up a child in the way they should go. And even when they're of age, they'll never depart from it. We may depart, we may get away, but we'll still come back mm -hmm. by God's grace. Mm -hmm. The other thing, parents, let's get interested in the, our children's friends. Get interested. Wow. That's very important. Because when we were being That's raised up, key. some of us where we grew up from, um, your neighbor, a parent to your friend was your parent. But these days, we have uh, fences, we don't even know who our neighbors are, for starters. We also don't know who our children's friends are. Because mm. you, you are in this together, you partner. And then parents, let's be concerned of other children. Not only your children, because you never know who your child will get in contact with. Church is very, very important. Church has activities for them. Let them be involved in the activities of church. But also for our students, we've looked at what they are good at. If a child is good in IT, we have identified programs that keep them busy. Yeah. If a child is good in music, there are different places where children can go. Parents may say we don't have money, but there are the th there is a lot of things that you can get off the internet. Download them and uh, equip them. We've, we've been telling our senior lady, our senior students that we have programs, learning programs that are free of charge. Instead of coming up with so many things for adding this WhatsApp message to the other, put your energy there. At the end of the holiday, you have something. Mm. But also the other thing that we literally told parents, and we keep on telling parents, mm. We'll, let's try to work on our children's heart. Taking away, I was sharing with one of our parents mm -hmm. who did say, for me, I just uh, um, uh, you disabled the passwords for the TV channels. Some channels I did control. And this little child was telling me, you know what? I'm very amazed at how daddy would say that he disabled passwords to this. When he leaves the gate, we disable. We know what to do. So and I, were telling, I was telling my friend, the parent, can you put those passwords in their heart? Depriving them things and not handling the real person mm. is meaningless. Because they'll find it. If he's not ready for a phone, have conversations. Why? Put in, uh, re, uh, put in, um, give them reward systems. Tell them, you know what? If um, you've misused the phone, let's first have it, then share the good and the bads and the what, then the don'ts, then recommit. Okay, taking it away forever may not be the solution, but working with them and with teenagers. You sit and deliberate. You don't police them. Because you're yes, not building um, a life. The, 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 the actual what we do with teenagers mm -hmm. is um, we lead them by influencing them. By influence, not authority. Mm -hmm. Because if I come up and it is authoritarian, mm -hmm. do this, mm -hmm. do that, mm -hmm. do that, mm -hmm. you know, um, they don't... Th it doesn't work with them, the do's and the don'ts. 
actually, if you uh, if one taken uh, uh, a good look at what we call our school's discipline policy, mm. it does not have do's and don'ts. Mm. Okay, so we endeavor mm. to make sure we to we talk over with the teenager, we talk over with them, mm. so we, so that it becomes a pattern of influencing them into something good instead of being authoritarian because mm -hmm. when you are authoritarian the outright response will be one of resistance okay so mm -hmm. we we sit and talk and then after talking we come to a conclusion this is what we are going to do so they become part mm -hmm. of the solution not simply a recipient of a decision being made but they own it, and once they own it, next time you meet, you, sometimes I'm walking around the, the school campus and I meet with them and say, we agreed, you, you remember, we agreed. This is what is going to be done. And then sometimes they come back to you, they say, they're giving you feedback on progress mm -hmm. of what was agreed upon. The other thing, uh, um, sorry, <laughs> the other thing is... Um, <laughs> sorry, we're just <laughs> running out of time, unfortunately, but <laughs> please go ahead. Uh, <laughs> My apologies. The other... Passion is killing me. Um, <laughs> the other thing is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, let's love these children. Mm. Personally, um, tough when things are not right, and they know how straight I am. But they equally know I love them. And they will actually come to you to share pertinent issues. Mm. So as parents during holiday, spare some time to love these people. And I always remind parents, we tend to forget where we came from. Mm. While we were at that stage, some of us were even more terrible. <laughs> mm. And it's only by the grace of God that we are what we are. Mm. Mm. So can we empathize you know you may be very very annoyed about what the child how can you do this and the other but have you reflected does really this young this is this mm. youth desire to be in that state okay. let's love them mm. let's reason with them okay. let's empathize mm. don't discipline to kill mm. The parent comes and says, no, you know, I'm just going to tear him up. Mm. But when you tear him up, well, what will you remain with? And what are you building? You're building a life. We, uh, we always tell our, ch our students that you are somebody's wife, you're somebody's husband at the right time, and then you're somebody's parent. You're either somebody's employee or employer. So whatever you're wo working on is a journey. And what you put in is what you're going to become. So those conversations are very pertinent with these teenagers, especially. And, and, and I love what you just said and mm. emphasized. Let's love these people. It's mm. not a, let's just not look at them as some toddlers who don't mm. know what they are doing. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Mm -hmm. They actually can resonate people mm. out, you know? Yes. <laughs> Kids are very interesting. Yes. And please and make them busy. Yes. We have financial <laughs> literacy. We, we have a financial we literacy. Talk about that after the <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. No, it's actually it's okay. Please, mm. okay, just mm. briefly mm. Uh, a hint. Uh, because yes. uh, um, our time is. Oh, I wish I could hold mm. the time, but mm. unfortunately, <laughs> I cannot. Um, w the other bit of it is that as a school, we have a financial literacy program, mm. and we always encourage our students to get involved in what mommy does. Daddy. It will be good for your for your child mm. to be a part of this. Okay. Maybe to do the program, maybe to look for I don't know what if it involves. Uh, let's do it the Indian way. Let them go for work, mm. and please, when they work, pay them. <laughs> Doesn't uh, we've taught our children how to bargain? <laughs> eh? Because they complain, parents give us work and they never pay us, and we are t we're telling them life is about. Uh, mm. presentation present oh. what you're going to give mm. and tell daddy this is what I'm going to do and this is this is my take mm. and we negotiate because that's what they are going to encounter in life 
Okay. <laughs> so there is a lot. I'm not saying they should be paid for domestic work. No. Mm. Because we always tell them who that is the house, okay. who that is the place, and everything. I'm so sorry, <laughs> Mrs. Dorothy. We, uh, Dorothy, we have we are out, we're completely out of sorry. time. Just we want to uh, ask you this one question. Um, tell us about the activities coming up at your school, and how can the children and parents be involved, and how does this help their character, or how is it going to help their character? Thank you so much. One of the activities that's coming up at our school. Mm. We believe in giving. Mm -hmm. We are what we are because Christ gave. Uh, while we are yet sinner, Christ gave his only begotten son. Mm. Uh, God gave his only begotten son. So we are giving as we celebrate Christmas. We, on Monday the 27th, we will all be cleaning the community. Even a four-year-old will be cleaning the community. We are giving. We are teaching children an act of giving. So we'll be cleaning the whole community together with our parents the staff, we are all going to be in this. And we have, we have partnership with the LCs, uh, police, and everyone. And we do this every year before we close term. Mm. Then the other activity that we have is on the 28th. We'll be giving back to the needy. Our community, the school is located in Busega, Sasha International Christian School. We have children who are needy. And we are saying we need to give back. So we always teach in our financial literacy uh, trainings for our children at school. We always tell them, whatever you get, if you make money, you make soap, you make this and the other, because they do businesses, take off at least 10% for giving. Yeah. That is from you. But also as a family, look for those things that are good that you would also want to receive. Not the ones that are torn and everything. Bring the them. ones you're tired of. Hey, tired of. That's not throw. giving. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's not giving. That's, so we that's are. Like relieving yourself of uh, something. Uh. So we are teaching the children mm -hmm. an art of generosity. Because the Bible says, mm -hmm. a heart of a generous mm -hmm. grows bigger and bigger. So mm -hmm. those are the major activities we have. But we also have the last one mm -hmm. on the 1st December at Watoto Church Chengira mm -hmm. at 2 o'clock. We are going to have our production where every child, God has given every child a gift. Those in speech, those in dancing, those in music, instruments, name it, preachers, everything is going to be there. Oh. So we also have that as we close off there. Yeah. Thank so you very everyone much. Everyone is mm -hmm. invited. <laughs> we are all invited. Yeah. <laughs> Please do make your way there on the 1st of December to Watoto Chengera. And just before we um, come to the end of the show, we just want to read a few comments from our viewers on that have commented on social media. Uh, one philosopher Keita, Keita mm -hmm. says the most important thing is for parents to live by example. Children yeah. learn so easily by association yeah. and coping from elders. Parents should also be attentive to the character traits of their children so as to mold them into morals. Atu Heire Baraba says being very open and honest to their children they should be role models to their children. Kauma says, lead by example. Parents serve as role models, showcasing values, ethics, and behaviors they want their children to adopt. Mm. Encourage empathy and kindness. Teach empathy by discussing emotions, encouraging acts of kindness, and fostering understanding towards mm. others' feelings. Mm. That's very key. Yeah. And I, I, just this morning, as I was driving to work, I was sharing with my children mm. that you need to choose your words when speaking to your siblings. Mm. Some words can bring in negative energy, and others can bring positivity. So be very mindful. This is a very good one. And Joseph Kabale says, you know, whatever you preach, make sure you don't do the opposite in your children's yeah. side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're preaching water, don't drink before your children. And a legal <laughs> officer, you ought to say, good parenting character grooms good, chil good, good children character. They learn from what they see in parents. Thank you very much for 